Welcome to part one of this five-part mini-series on getting unstuck. What to do when you are ready for a change. I commend you for taking the first step and showing up. This course is packed with some of my best solutions to help you get started. These basic principles work for nearly any rut. They can help you even if you don't know exactly what you want yet. Years ago, I learned a valuable tip regarding our mind and how we learn. When we hear or read something we have heard before, our mind wants to dismiss it thinking, oh, I already know that. That simple thought can sabotage our ability to gain new insight from something we think we already know. Having what is called the beginner's mind will help you to gain new insights from information that may be familiar to you. So instead of thinking, I already know that, tell me something new, instead think, what more can I learn from this message? Or how can I actually apply this information to my current situation? In 2 Timothy 3, we read that in the last days, people will be always learning and not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They will no longer listen to sound teaching, but will follow their own desires and look for teachers who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. Don't be like these people. Don't just rush through this material, but really take time to listen, to think, and to take action. You can get unstuck starting today. I'd like to introduce you to one of my clients. Let's call her Tracy. She had a goal to attain a certification. It required many long hours of study. She really wanted and needed to do this, but because of a recent accident, she was in a lot of pain and not able to motivate herself to stay disciplined. She was really stuck, not moving toward her dream. She was frustrated with herself and she knew something had to change and fast before it was too late. So like Tracy, maybe you feel like an opportunity or just life itself is passing you by and you're wasting valuable time. Time is precious and it's worth the investment to ensure that you use it wisely. After all, one day we will give an account for how we used it and that's a sobering thought. So maybe your situation is relationships or your health that's suffering. Perhaps you're down on yourself because you know you're not living up to your potential. How do we get stuck in the first place? It all starts when we get off track. And there are three basic things or causes that get us off track. The first one is external. It's significant life events like moving, death, divorce, job changes, illness, accidents, even something as simple as taking a trip, changing of seasons, or getting the flu. These get you out of your routine. The second cause is internal. These are the mental roadblocks that put a halt to your progress, like, like fears and limiting beliefs, perfectionism, overwhelm, sabotage, and victim mentality. Maybe excuses and double-mindedness. Do these sound familiar to you? There's one other way that you can get stuck in a rut, and that's just because we become lazy and we stop doing the daily habits that keep us on track. You know, I've experienced nearly all of these. I've moved 11 times. I've had three children and homeschooled them. I've gone through the different seasons of family life. Being married 34 years, you're bound to run into a lot of things that cause you to get stuck. We've had financial setbacks, job changes, you name it. Becoming an entrepreneur, you know what I'm doing right now, helping people to be set free, has forced me to address my fears my limiting beliefs and excuses, all those internal blocks that keep you stuck, keep you from doing and, and moving forward in your life. So speaking from experience, the longer we stay in that rut, the more stuck we get. Believe me, it's so true. We start developing new habits and patterns that drive us deeper and make it nearly impossible to climb out on our own. It's like wet cement, it hardens and it just makes it so difficult. What is it costing you to stay stuck? Lost time, money, relationships, maybe your health? Being stuck can increase your stress, anxiety, and depression. Have you been there? Do you, are you experiencing any of these things? 
Whatever the cause, the real question you're probably asking is, okay, how do I get unstuck? How do I get going again and maintain my momentum? It's time to get on with my life. So why am I offering this course? Because you matter. Your life matters and what you want matters. Others are counting on you to be and to do your best. The world needs your gifts, your contribution, and your life will be more rewarding when you're living in your fullest potential. The point is, you can't afford to stay stuck one more day. Life is just too short, and I'm here to help you to move forward. You know, one day I told the Lord, thank you so much, God, for setting me free. He, he really did set me free from so many things, and he clearly told me, then go, help others be set free too. So that's why I'm here for you. I want to help you be set free. I want you to move forward, determining how ready you are to take action. You don't have to know exactly just what that is yet. We will get to that in part two, but you do have to become intentional. Your mindset is where this first shift happens. This first tool will reveal to you your level of intention or your commitment level, we like to call it. There are five levels in this tool but only one of them has the power to pull you out of your rut. Once you know this, your level, then you can start making progress and get that ball rolling. So in the next few modules, I'll show you how to increase your intention to the level that will guarantee your success. That's right, I said guarantee your success. You have to have this if you want to get unstuck and get what you want. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to pause the recording and get a pen and paper. Get something nice that you can write on for this course and refer back to. It doesn't have to be elaborate or anything special, but it should be more than just a scratch pad or backside of an unused envelope. Maybe your journal, a small notebook, or several sheets of blank copy paper would be good. Entitle it, How to Get Unstuck Mini Course. Okay, pause the tape and go get your paper. All right, let's get started. Tool number one five levels of commitment. The first one is denial. And the attitude is, what problem? I don't even have a problem. The problem is that others see that you have a problem before you do. That's denial. That's the first one. Number two, refusal. The attitude is, I won't. I see there's a problem, but I'm not ready to do anything about it. This automatically closes the door to any type of forward movement. So that's refusal. Number three, contemplation. The attitude is, I might, but you're still not sure yet. You know that you have a problem, but you aren't convinced yet that the benefit is worth the effort. Committed unless. The attitude is, I will unless. So you're ready to do something as long as you don't run into roadblocks. It could be fears, limiting beliefs, lack of resources, other people's negative opinions, failure, seeming failure. Um, that one is committed unless, number four. And then the fifth one we have, this is the key, this is the one you want. Committed no matter what. The attitude is, I will do this, I'm all in. When you are committed no matter what, to create the life you long for, to get unstuck, you've decided that nothing is gonna stand in your way. You're gonna keep going, and keep trying and you're gonna find a way till you arrive. Now it might not be easy, but it is possible. If it was easy, you'd have already done it. Remember, all things are possible to them that believe. God gives us strength. He's gonna give us the ability to do what he calls us to do, right? Because he put the dream in our heart in the first place. So remember our example, Tracy, who I talked about in the beginning? She was at level four, committed unless when she came to me for help. She knew what she wanted. She wanted that certification. She had already signed up for the course and she had taken some action, but there was a deadline. And now her physical limitations were causing her to get stuck. On her own, she could only push herself so far and she knew it wasn't enough. She didn't have the motivation or the support to keep going no matter what. And in this series, I'm gonna share with you some of the tools that helped her to overcome the mental and physical obstacles that she faced. She did reach her goal, by the way, and she's enjoying the rewards of her hard work. At the end of this series, I'm gonna offer you some suggestions on how to move forward. 
Depending on what you want to accomplish, this training may be all that you need. Others, on the other hand, will want additional help with clarity, planning, overcoming the mental and emotional roadblocks, and accountability. And I'm going to tell you how you can get that too. I'm not asking you today to commit at a level five to that final destination. You don't have to be there yet. I'm just asking you for something doable, a baby step. I'm asking you to commit today to completing this mini series. Stay with me. Now in part two, you're going to get clear on what it is you want. In part three, we're going to increase your motivation. Part four, you're going to create a plan and your first steps. And finally, in part five, I'm going to show you how to move forward. You know, success is all about creating small, doable action steps that will move you in the right direction until you arrive. That's what coaching is all about, and it is so powerful. So what do you say? Will you stay with me? Will you do the exercises and begin taking action with that beginner's mind, pretending like this is the first time you've heard this information? I'm here for you. You don't have to feel alone anymore. Now watch your email inbox for the rest of this series. Make sure my email is added to your contact list so that it doesn't end up in your spam folder. Now until tomorrow, be thinking about what it is you really want to create in your life. You only have one life, so make it the best you can. I'd like to leave you with a couple of scriptures. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans for welfare and to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. Isn't that encouraging? God has plans for us. He knows what he created us for. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. So don't settle for less. 